So we're going to start with the snout. Go ahead and get whatever color that you want for the snout of your squirrel or skunk. And I'm using the fleece colored yarn. So you just take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop and then get your crochet hook and again I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. Put your crochet hook through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch down that knot and then place the loop around your crochet hook. Then we're going to make a chain. We're going to make a chain of seven. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, So after you finish your chain of seven, you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, complete a single crochet, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and complete a single crochet. You're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across except for the last stitch. So in the last stitch you're going to make three single crochet into the same stitch. So now I've reached the last stitch. So I'm going to make three single crochet into that last stitch. And at the same time, you're going to be turning your work because you're going to be working on the opposite side. Go ahead and go behind the loose yarn end as you crochet. So you can see how I'm placing three single crochet into that last stitch and then I turned it so I'm on the opposite side because we're going to be working in rounds. So now you're going to go into the next stitch, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop and make your single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch on the opposite side except for the last stitch. In the last stitch you're going to be placing three single crochet again. So before I place those three single crochet, I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end because I've buried it nicely. Then I'm going to make three single crochet into that last stitch. And then you just completed that round. You should have completed 15 stitches in that round. Go ahead and get your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and we're going to be making an increase round, which means we're going to increase the number of stitches by two after completing this next round. So you're going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. So that was your first one. Go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. So that's your second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So one single crochet into six stitches. Then you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch on the end. So two single crochet into the same stitch. Then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch except for the last stitch. So here's your first. Go on to the next stitch. 
for the second single crochet. And again, we're on the opposite side now, working in rounds. So here's my third single crochet. Next stitch for the fourth. Next stitch for the fifth. Ne next stitch for the sixth. And then one single crochet into the seventh. And then two single crochet into the last stitch. And then that completes the second round. You should have a total of 17 stitches after that increase round. Now you're not going to make any increase rounds. You're going to be making one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So go ahead and make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. Just leave your yarn marker in place when you get there. That way you can keep track of your rounds that you complete. And each time you reach your yarn marker, you should have a total of 17 stitches. So you should not be increasing or decreasing the number of stitches in the round. After you finish three rounds, one, two, three, of one single crochet in every stitch around, then you're ready to slip stitch and finish off. So just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through and bring enough yarn through to sew the snout onto the squirrel. So I've already cut mine. So go ahead and cut your yarn. And then you can remove your yarn marker. And now you're ready to place the nose onto the snout. And I always put where I finished off towards the bottom of the snout. So here's the center where we first started crocheting. So you just want to place your nose, the safety nose. This is my 21 millimeter safety nose. And you can see that above the triangle I have a couple of rows. And the tip of the triangle is just above that center start. Then once you're happy with the placement of the nose, you can take and place the safety latch. So these are a little different. I just realized that you can place them with the dome up. So I had a pair of safety eyes that were like that. It's kind of a weird design, but it works. Just take and snap it in place. Then you can take and set the snout aside for now. We're going to make the portion that goes behind the snout. If you're making your own nose, I'm going to show you how I did that. So I use my Red Heart black colored yarn, and then you just take the yarn and fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop, 
for a slip knot. Then just cinch that loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain. So I made a chain of five. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four, and five. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you just take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet, the next stitch over for a single crochet, and then that brings you to your last stitch. In your last stitch, make three single crochet into the same stitch. And then I go behind my loose yarn end to bury it as I work. And then you're just going to turn your crochet work so that you're working on the opposite side. So we're going to be working in rounds. So then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then the next stitch over for a single crochet. And then at this point, you can go ahead and trim the loose yarn end if you want to. And then you're going to make three single crochet in the stitch right before the starting chain. So three single crochet into the next stitch. So for mine, I have 11 stitches total in the round. Then you can take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and now you're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. So one single crochet into every stitch around. Then when you get to the yarn marker, just leave the yarn marker in place and then you're just going to continue crocheting one single crochet into every stitch around until you have the size that you want for your nose. For mine, I made a total of two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch around. And then when I'm finished, I just remove the yarn marker and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. You just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over, and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto your crochet squirrel, skunk, or cat. And then before you sew it on in place, Make sure that you stuff it, and I use just a little bit, just cut a little bit of yarn, the black yarn, and then use this black yarn as stuffing because you have a couple holes in the, on the end of the nose, so you won't be able to see the white through the nose. You'll just see the black yarn that's used as stuffing. So again, just use stuffing for the inside of your crochet nose. And then you can sew it on, just center it the same way you would a real safety nose. And then sew it in place. So I'm still using my fleece colored yarn. And I'm going to fold it over on itself to form a loop, just like we did for the snout. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. 
and then just cinch the loop around the hook. Now we're going to make a chain. We're going to make a chain of 25, but I'm just going to show you four of the chains on video tutorial. So go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 25, and then come back. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and bring up a loop to complete a single crochet. And again, you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across except for the last stitch. So the last stitch, again, we're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. So go ahead finish making one single crochet into each stitch and then three single crochet into the last stitch and then come back. Then after you finish the three single crochet into the last stitch go ahead and turn your work so that the opposite side is on top because we're going to be working in rounds then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Go behind your loose yarn end to complete your single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, again, you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. So I just finished my three single crochet into the last stitch and I completed that round with 51 total stitches. Now I'm going to take and place my yarn marker and we're going to make another increase round. So you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch until you get to the end. So I made one single crochet into 24 stitches and that brought me to the end. And then you have the one stitch on the end, you're going to make two single crochet into that same stitch. Then you just make one single crochet into each stitch back to the yarn marker except for the last stitch. The last stitch before the yarn marker, you're going to place two single crochet into that one stitch. So I just finished my last two single crochet into the same stitch in that last stitch, and that brings me to a stitch count of 53. Then just take and move your yarn marker up and now you're not going to be making increase rounds or decrease rounds so you're going to maintain the number of stitches in the round and just make one single crochet in every stitch around. So you're going to be completing one single crochet in every stitch for two rounds. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet into the next 23 stitches. So one single crochet into 23 stitches and then come back. So this is how my work looks after making one single crochet into 23 stitches. Then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and turn your work and then we're going to go back towards the yarn marker. So just make one single crochet into the next stitch for your first single crochet. One single crochet into the second stitch and keep making one single crochet into each of the tw next 22 stitches and then come back. Then 
you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the backing onto the squirrel. Now you can leave the yarn marker in place if you want to. That way you can kind of keep track of where the bottom is. So this is the bottom portion and then this is the top portion. And I just left the yarn marker in place. The other thing you can tell is by the where you finished off. So this long yarn end is at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and remove mine because I know that this is my bottom portion and this will go behind the snout. So again you can set this portion aside for now. Now I'm going to finish showing you how to make the other eye. If you like the backing for the eyes, this crochet portion here, even if you're using the comical eyes or you're making your eyes without the safety, you just want the backing. I'm going to show you how to make that. So I'm using the fleece colored yarn. I'm going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take my crochet hook, go right through the loop. I'm going to make a slip knot just like we did before. And then just cinch that knot down in the loop around the crochet hook. So we're going to make a chain of eight. So I have a chain of eight. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. And that's going to give you a stitch count of seven. So you're going to have a total stitch count of seven when you reach the end. Then after you finish your last stitch, you're going to make a chain of one. Turn your work. And this stitch right under the chain one is your first stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And that's going to be your second stitch for the row one single crochet in every stitch across and that will still give you a stitch count of seven for the row. So we just completed the second row not counting the first chain. Go ahead and chain one again. Turn your work and you're going to keep repeating this until you have a total of ten rows. So now we're on the third row and you're going to keep chaining one, turning your work and making one single crochet in every stitch across until you've completed a total of 10 rows. And then come back. Now after you finish your 10 rows of one single crochet in every stitch, you can see how you have straight edges so it shouldn't be getting wider or narrower you should have a straight edge on both sides if you did it correctly. Then after you finish your last single crochet on that tenth row you're not going to chain one you're just going to turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make one single crochet into the next five stitches. So here's my second, third, fourth, and fifth. So you're going to leave that last stitch unworked. You're going to turn your work again. You're going to make one single crochet into the next stitch and then one single crochet into the second stitch and one single crochet into the third stitch. Then you're going to turn your work, make one single crochet into the next stitch and then you're just going to slip stitch into that next stitch. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the piece onto the squirrel or the skunk. 
And you're going to need two of these. I've already finished one, so I'm going to show you how to finish the other eye. So the first thing you need to do is cut your two pieces out of the felt, the white. I use the white glitter, but you need the white portion and then the black glitter portion for the eye. I just took a piece of paper and this one is the black portion. Just cut out a four and a half centimeter by three centimeter piece. If you want the free diagram that's already measured out for free printing, I have the PDF, free PDF available on my blog, www.helenmaycrochet.com. So you can just print it up for free. Here is the white portion in case you're just making your own and you don't need the diagram. This one is four centimeters by two and a half centimeters. So I've already cut out the two pieces and you can trim them after you finish cutting them out you can trim the white portion if you need to. I'm probably going to end up trimming mine because you want to have the black portion a little bit of the black portion showing around the white portion. So however amount that you want showing so this is for mine. Just make sure that both of them, so I'm going to probably trim it a little bit more until I get it the way that I want. Just make sure that as you trim them that both eyes look the same. So you don't want one eye to be larger than the other. They should be symmetrical. Then the other tricky part is getting the safety eye placed in the exact same spot so what I did was I just took one piece at a time and then I'm going to fold the bottom portion where I'm going to place my safety eye and then you just take your embroider scissors and just gently just a little bit you just trim it a little bit a little V to make a little hole and then you can take and put the the embroidery scissor, scissor through the bottom to kind of open it up a little bit more. Then you can place the safety latch through and you can see how I matched it perfectly. Then you can cut the hole in the black portion being careful to line it up carefully as well. So what I did was just lined up the safety eye where I want to have it making sure that they're equal Then you can fold the black portion after you know where you want the hole and the same way you just kind of take and cut just a little opening and then you can take and put the scissor through the opening too and then just fit the safety eye through the hole. So I'm pretty happy with how mine lined up. And this is what it looks like on the back. Then you can take the backing and you're going to stick the eye through the backing making sure that it's on the same lined up equally before you place it on the backing. Make sure that they're lined up so that they look similar on both sides. You don't want one eye lower than the other. And then once you're happy, then you can take the safety latch and place it. So make sure that you have it exactly where you want because once you put the safety latch on, it's not coming off. It's pretty secure. It'll click in place then you're ready to sew the eyelashes on if you want. I mean not sew but um, glue the eyelashes on if you want them. So again I found this value pack to be the best so I have plenty for any more amigurumi that I'm going to make in the future and I only used half so this is half 
and this is the other half of an eyelash. Then my eyelash, I'm going to make sure that I put it in the exact same place. You also have to make sure you don't want to put it in the exact same place because you want it to be on the opposite side. So make sure you have it the way that you want it to look. And then once you know where you want to place it, and you can use tweezers too if you need to, to kind of grab it so you don't touch the super glue, but you carefully line up where you want the eyelash, and then you're going to place the super glue where you want it, and then you're going to place the eyelash on the super glue. So I just took my super glue and I love this brush, it works great. Then I just take and brush where I want the glue. Then I just take the eyelash and I just grab mine, but you could use tweezers if you want. And then just place the eyelash where you want it. And then you can use a Q-tip too, so you don't touch the glue. And then you just take and position the eyelash where you want it with the Q-tip. And now my eyes are finished. So you can set these aside, let them dry, and then we're going to work on the body. Actually, we're working on the head, not the body. So now we're going to make the head. And again, for um, the female squirrel, I'm using Big Twist Premium Yarn. The color that I'm using is gingerbread. So whatever color that you're using for your head of the squirrel, go ahead and get that yarn now. And then we're going to start with the magic circle. So you just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn across your two fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops, bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and your thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Then just take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work, and we're going to work into the first stitch in the round of the magic circle and you're going to place two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches and then come back. So now I have 12 stitches in the round Go ahead and turn your work over and then pull on that loose yarn end if you need to close the center of your magic circle. And then just turn your work back around. Go ahead and get your yarn marker. We're going to make increase rounds, which means that we're going to increase the number in the round, number of stitches. So for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And for those that already know what to do, I'm going to be increasing to six. So one single crochet into six stitches, and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. But for everyone else that's not familiar, I'm going to work these rounds with you. So for the first increase round, it's one single crochet into one stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern 
all the way around. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around, back to the yarn marker, and then come back. So you should have finished 18 total stitches in the round. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up for the next increase round. Now for the next increase round you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So that last increase round was a total of 24 stitches. So now you can tell that each round is increasing by six stitches. So I'm going to stop giving you the stitch count because now you know each round will increase by six stitches. So for this next increase round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then you're going in order. So the last round we did one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. So this round will be one single crochet into three stitches. and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then for the next round it's one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then one single crochet into five stitches and then two single crochet into the sixth stitch. And then the last increase round is one single crochet into six stitches and then two single crochet into the seventh stitch. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you just take your yarn marker and move it up. We're finished with the increase rounds now. So now you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around and that means that your stitch count is going to always be the same. Just leave your yarn marker in place and you're going to continue with one single crochet in every stitch for a total of 15 rounds and then come back. Mine has a stitch count of 48 each time I reach the yarn marker. So I'm going to keep on going. See how I went past the yarn marker. Continuing to make one single crochet in every stitch for 15 rounds. And again this is the head. So this is how your work should look after finishing 15 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. And now we're going to start making the closing for the head, even though we haven't sewn on the face yet. Don't worry, we're still going to have an opening in the bottom of the head that will allow us to sew the face on our squirrel. So after you finish your 15 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, go ahead and take your yarn marker, move it up to where you left off, and now we're going to make a decrease round. So what that means is we're going to be decreasing the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to make one single crochet into six stitches. And then we're going to make our decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So take your crochet hook you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. You're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you decreased to 42 stitches in the round. 
Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to be decreasing all the way down to two. So one single crochet into two stitches and then your decrease stitch. But our next decrease stitch is going to be one single crochet into five stitches. So we're going to be going in chronological order down to two. Then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So one single crochet into five stitches and then your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around. So now you should have 36 stitches total in the round. Then go ahead and move your yarn marker up. Then you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. and then make your decrease stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker so you should have had 30 stitches total in the round then for the next decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then your decrease stitch you should have had 24 stitches in the round total after that last decrease round then your last decrease round is one single crochet into two stitches and then your decrease stitch. Now you should have a total of 18 stitches in the round and that's going to be the opening for the head. We're going to make the neck now. Go ahead and take and move your yarn marker up and now you're no longer going to make decrease rounds. You're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. So every time you reach the yarn marker you should still have a total of 18 stitches in the round. So again we're making the neck so we're going to keep it the same size. One single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. Then after you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch, this is how your work should look so far. You have a little opening for the neck. Then you're going to take and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the head onto the body. Then you can take and remove the yarn marker. And now we're ready to put the face onto the squirrel or skunk. So the first thing you're going to do is take the head and I leave where I finished off on the neck towards the back and then I just sew on the first eye piece for the backing of the eye is where you're going to line it up and you're going to count from the magic circle at the top of the head one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. So right under that seventh round is the tip of the backing for the eye. And then here you can see how I'm sewing on all around the edge. And then leave the loose yarn ends on the wrong side of the head. And then just tie a knot. You can tie a knot from the outside. I've already finished sewing. So I'm just going to show you how I tied the knot and then buried the loose yarn end. So I'm going to go tie a knot towards the bottom and I'm just going to bring the loose yarn end towards the inside of the head. Then I can take and be careful with the eyelashes because you don't want to ruin the eyelashes and then I just take and tie a knot with the loose yarn end at the bottom of the eyepiece. So on the eyepiece you have where you started that loose yarn end. So I brought that to the inside and then used my long end for sewing. And then once you tie a knot on the inside you can just leave those loose yarn ends on the inside. And that's what this one eye looks like. Now with the felt eyes I, I sewed it the same way, so I went to the top 
and counted down seven and then sewed that one on the same way. If you're using the comical eyes, I just wanted to show you how I placed them. So here you can see from the magic circle at the top of the head, I counted down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I just lined up the comical eyes, and then the spaces between one, two, three, four, five. It's about five. One, two, three, four, five stitches between the eyes. And this is what it looks like. Then you can go ahead and sew the other one in place the exact same way. Make sure that it lines up. And also make sure that the safety eyes line up if you're using the safety eyes. If you're using the felt eyes, you just want to make sure that the pupils are lined up. And then the space in between the crochet eye backing is about two stitches, approximately two stitches. And I did the same thing for this one. Next, you're going to take the portion that goes behind the snout and sew it in place. You want to line it up so it's directly under the eyes. And you also want to make sure that it's equal amount of stitches on this side as well as the other side. And then just sew along the top first with the same colored yarn with your tapestry needle. So sew it right across the top first because we're going to take and put stuffing into the cheeks before we close up the bottom portion. And we're also going to sew the snout on before we put the stuffing in. So for now, just line it up and then just take and sew across the top. For Chip, you can see that I left about one row beneath the eye before sewing on the portion that goes under the snout. And this is what it looks like on Chip if you use the comical eyes. And this is what it looks like on Pepe Le Pew, or the skunk. You can see how I lined it up right under the eyes. Then, go ahead and just leave the long end that you le left for sewing. Just leave that hanging for now. Then you're going to take the snout. So go ahead and get the snout and put a little bit of stuffing on the inside and then use your tapestry needle if you left a long end for sewing or just get the same colored yarn. And then you're going to line up the snout and get ready to sew the snout in place. Then you want to line up the snout. Make sure that you center the nose between the two eyes and then I have my snout going just above the backing of the snout. So you can see that the nose is lined up more with the eyes. And you can even raise it, the bottom portion up a little bit too. And then I'm kind of holding the backing of the back of the snout. And then I'm just sewing mainly to the snout itself the backing of the snout and then just sewing it in place just going in and out around the edge of the snout make sure that the nose stays straight you don't want it to be crooked and you just want to reposition it each time that you bring the yarn through so just make sure that you have the snout lined up the, the way that you want as you sew it in place and then just go in and out and then this is how I held it and just sewed it in place. For my snout I made sure that the snout lined up with the center portion where we started on the backing of the snout so you can see how I lined up the snout and sewed it in place. 
And then I just took and tied a knot on the inside and left the loose yarn end. Now you're just going to take a little bit of stuffing and you're going to place it into the cheeks on each side. This is what mine looks like after sewing it all around. You can see how I put some stuffing in the cheeks. Now we're going to make the tongue. Now for the tongue I used my red sparkle yarn and I'm going to start with the magic circle. So just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. And then just wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. And then you're going to bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet, go ahead and close it. Just pulling that loose yarn in and finish closing it. This time you're going to try to close that center of the magic circle by pulling on that loose yarn in gently and we're not going to join into a circle. So what you're going to do is chain one Turn your work, then you're going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're just going to go across each stitch making a single crochet. So one single crochet into each of the stitches except for the last stitch. In the last stitch, you're just going to make a slip stitch. So go ahead and slip stitch into that last stitch. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the tongue onto the project. So here you can see what your tongue looks like and you decide which side you want showing for the right side. Then you just take and place your, th your tongue where you want it and you can angle it if you want to have a little fun. I angled mine either to the right side or to the left side. This one I have it going more towards the... on video I'll just say towards the right side. And then I'm only sewing it across the tip of the tongue. I'm leaving the flap of the tongue but you could sew along the tongue too if you wanted to to sew it in place. For mine, I just sewed it to the backing of the snout. I didn't go all the way into the inside of the head. And then I'll tie a knot with the loose yarn end and then just bury the loose yarn end into the head. So I'll show you how I buried my loose yarn end as soon as I finish sewing it in place. So for mine I just took the tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end, and then I just went back and forth under the tongue to bury it. And you can also go under the tongue and then just go across the red portion and then just bury it that way as well. Then you can take and put stuffing inside of the head to kind of shape the head, make sure that it's the shape that you want. And then just kind of fix the cheeks the way you want to. And now you could put the blush on the cheeks if you want. We're not going to make the ears until the last part. So don't worry about the fact that we don't have the ears yet. We're going to set this aside and make the rest of the squirrel or skunk. Another thing that I did was put a little bit more of the Gorilla Glue or Super Glue on top of the eyelashes only after it's dried. 